Hey everybody! Well today we're going to make some more sourdough bread and a while back I did a sourdough bread recipe and I mentioned that I might make some chocolate cherry sourdough bread or some other flavors and I have had requests to do them so we're going to try that today. I'm going to start out with my basic sourdough bread recipe and again it's an overnight but if this is not going to be the full tutorial so if you want to see how to go start to finish please go up there and watch my videos they will give you complete instructions on how to do the bread this one is just going to be the recipe getting it started and it will be preparing the loaves with the dried cherries and chocolate and whatever else I come up with tomorrow. I'm going to do a double batch and it'll probably make three to four loaves. So we'll see. I don't know. We'll find out. So what I'm going to do is I started out, here's my sourdough starter and it is really beautiful and bubbly and active. So I fed it last night. I fed it this morning. It's got lots of food. Those little yeasty beasties are happy. So we're going to start out, and again, this is a double batch. A normal batch would be 200 grams of starter. I'm going to put in 400 grams. And let me put this down here. And you may or may not see it, but let's get it. We're going to tear the scale to make sure it's zeroed. So 400 grams. Four oh one. There we go. Four hundred grams. And again, you weigh your ingredients because you want to make sure that if the bread is not going to be too dry too tough and if you just weigh up if you just measure out flour very good chance that that flour has settled it's going to be more than if you weighed it out so you want to weigh your ingredients all right and i'm going to add 640 grams of water this is just room temperature Six hundred and forty grams of water. Now normally I would not add sugar. You know what? I think I'm going to add my flour first. Let's do that. So we're going to add 500 grams of bread flour. I'm going to just slightly break this up. Just to make it easier to mix up. And that's what it's looking like. You have little clumps in there and that's okay. That's little colonies of yeasty beasties. We like those things. That's what's gonna make the bread rise. Okay, so let's tear out the scale. And I've got my whisk in there and that's okay as long as I zero it after. So we're gonna put 500 grams of bread flour
500 grams. Okay. Let's move that flour out of the way. Tear it out. Again, we have our whisk sitting there. And we're going to put 500 grams of all-purpose flour. And again, I use the unbleached. It's non-GMO. Stuff that they spray on wheat and grind into it doesn't belong in my bread. Okay, now because this is going to be a little bit sweeter type bread, I don't want sour, but I don't want real sweet either. So I'm going to put in 30 grams of sugar, and this is pure cane, organic. It's still sugar, but it's better than the stuff that you get that's all processed. I'm speeding this up so you don't have to watch the whole thing, but it is covered in my other sourdough videos. You want to thoroughly mix this, make sure there's no dry bits of flour, and that the moisture on the bottom has thoroughly been mixed through the dough. Now I'm gonna spread it out. I'm going to cover it up and let it sit for two hours. All right, so I'm just going to sprinkle over the top 22 grams of sea salt, as evenly as you can, but you know what? It's not perfect. I'm going to get my hands wet because I'm going to be handling the dough, and I've wet my scraper, and I love these plastic bench scrapers just for this reason because they really help. Again, speeding this way up, but this part is taking the place of kneading the dough and we're letting time do all the work. We're going to basically lift and stretch the dough and then fold it and then turn it and once each direction, so four times, and that's really all you have to do. Once you've done that, you want to turn the dough over and flatten it out. Normally it's not this difficult to turn the dough over, but because I made this double batch, it just was not cooperating. But it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just trying to equalize the temperature and give it a chance to rise even. Tonight, I am gonna stretch and fold this four more times. I, I want to wait 30 minutes and stretch and fold and do that four more times. After I do that, I'm going to cover this and put it in the refrigerator overnight. That's going to give this dough plenty of time to do its magic. And then tomorrow, all I have to do is divide it, shape it, and bake it. And I'm going to add in my yummy ingredients at that point. I've let my sourdough rest in the refrigerator overnight dough and I will show you it has grown quite a bit which is beautiful I think I'm gonna get four loaves out of this I normally do two so today I'm gonna do four since I doubled this and I want to cut this in half and I'm only going to work with half at once because that's all that I'm going to bake at once and I don't want it sitting out too long. So I'm going to just, 
eyeball it. Here I'm just going to be separating the dough in half and I will carefully take out half and keep the top side smooth. You have a pretty side of your dough and then you have the rough side. So right now this is the rough side of it. And boy, this is just full of bubbles. It's wonderful. Let me put this back in the refrigerator. Okay. Just a little more rice flour under it. And let me see. That big old bubble there. We're going to pop it. We love bubbles. We just don't want too big of bubbles because that ruins the crumb. Here I'm just going to separate this into two loaves and they don't have to be perfect. It's just roughly half of this so it would be a quarter of the dough. And once I do that I'm going to do a pre-shape which is just basically creating kind of a log shape and, and rolling the dough. Once you've shaped the logs, you're going to set them aside, covered with a plastic bag, and let it rest for 20 minutes, and then you'll come back and shape them. All right, time to shape these loaves and get them ready for their rise. I'm going to speed through this again, but the shaping starts out, you take the loaf that's been resting and you stretch it out into a rectangle. Then you'll be ready for finishing it up. Now, I told you we were going to do differently this time, and what we're going to do is we are going to use dried cherries. These are sweet. You can use tart, whatever you can get, and some dark chocolate. This is 60% um, bittersweet chocolate. Mostly because I think it will hold up better to the sourdough. And all I'm going to do is put that on there. I've roughly chopped the cherries. Only because they were large and I didn't want those big chunks. They're just small pieces. And I'm just going to kind of put it all over. And that was about half of one of these packages. And I got a few left. I think it was a little more than I need. And then I roughly chopped this bittersweet chocolate. And again, I'm just going to put it on there. And I'm going to put a little more of the chocolate just because it's going to melt, so you, you want that flavor to go throughout. So that's what I'm going to do right here. All right. Now I'm just going to take the top edge and fold it toward me and press down a little bit. And it's not going to press real well because you've got all these ingredients. But we're going to do our best here. And then we're going to pinch the edge when we get to the end. And we want to pinch it really well because we've got all those yummy ingredients inside. And we're going to kind of poke the ends in. And 
And now, make sure you got that sealed well. I'm going to put just a tiny bit of the rice flour just because it's sticking a little more than I'd like. And we're just going to roll it just a little bit because we want to make this a little bit more, a little bit longer. And we're also mixing in those ingredients, which is pretty cool. All right, and you look for the top. Again, you've got a seam, and this is my seam. So I have already put some rice flour and a little bit of fine cornmeal on my kush. And I'm gonna put this in there upside down, seam up, and we're going to cover it up. And then we'll do the next one. Okay, I've already got the other one kind of padded out. Now what we're going to do is I have taken, in this case I use freeze-dried cranberries, only because I thought I had dried ones and cran raisins, I didn't have them. But I did have the freeze-dried cranberries from Thrive Life, so I used what I had. So what I've done is I roughly chopped those just to break them up a little bit, and I added the zest of one orange, and the juice of one orange, and just a tiny bit of water, maybe a a teaspoon at the most. I didn't want them really wet, I just wanted them moist. So now all I'm going to do is spread that over the top. Now if I were making this well in advance, I don't know that I would use something this moist. But because it's only going to be rising for maybe an hour. I'm fine with this. And I don't want all the juice in there necessarily. I just want the cranberries and the zest. And I'm just going to kind of smash it in just a little. And I used about half a cup of the freeze-dried cranberries. Again, you could use Probably the same amount of the dried cranberries. And I just let it sit in there for a little while because I wanted all of that flavor from the orange juice and the orange zest to get inside those cranberries. And I'm making this up so I can do what I want, right? All right. And I like that idea, but then I thought I wanted to add something else to it. So I have crystallized ginger. And I love ginger, and I especially love candied or crystallized ginger. And again, I gave it a rough chop. These were big pieces like this. Pretty good sized chunks, so I, I just chopped it up roughly. And I'm just going to put a little bit on there, maybe a tablespoon, because it is strong. But I think that that ginger bite is going to be so good with the cranberry and orange. I'll just kind of spread it out best you can, because you don't want it all in one place. That looks good. All right, so this time we're going to do in thirds. So we're going to fold it over about a third and press it down best you can. And normally I would turn this around, but I'm not sure how well it's going to work. So let me give it a shot. It doesn't want to. All right, so I'm just going to fold from the front. And we want to get dough to dough, so you kind of press a little bit from the edge. 
so that you can get that seal. And again, you're going to press the ends in well because you don't want that stuff coming out or getting burnt. So we're going to really press the seal, the seam, get it really well together. Again, just a tiny bit more, you don't want a lot, a tiny bit more of the rice flour just to help you shape it a little bit more. And that's not sealed enough. And we're just going to lightly roll it just so we can get it shaped. Okay. We put rice flour on the kush. A little bit more. A little bit of the cornmeal. And again, make sure it's really well sealed. Seam side up. And then we're going to cover this up. Now I've got the oven preheating to 475. I'm going to actually turn it up to 500 just before. I don't like leaving my oven at that high a temperature. I have my bread stone, baking stone in there preheating. And five minutes before it's ready, I'm going to put that roasting lid in there. And again, this is all in my previous videos. So I'm going to leave this for about an hour. Then I'm going to come back, get it ready to go into the oven. We're ready to take these loaves out of the kush and get them ready to bake. So let's get to it. Here we're going to transfer the loaves from the couche onto a baking sheet lined with parchment paper and we just use a little bit of cornmeal to keep the loaves from sticking to the breadboard. And so we're going to do that and then brush off some of the cornmeal and then we will make some slits in the top using my lom or razor blade. Now I'm going to transfer the loaves into the oven and cover it with the roasting pan after I spray it with water and let it cook for 20 minutes covered and another 20 minutes uncovered. All right, ready for round two. So I've got my dough. It's pre-shaped. Flatten it out some. I'm going to go a different route this time. This time, I'm going to use artichoke pesto with sun-dried tomatoes and some Parmesan cheese. So, I'm going to get this spread out a little bit, and then I'll show you what I put on it. Okay, so I have some artichoke pesto, and this is one I get at World Market, but any kind of artichoke pesto that you like. And it's got some olive oil on top, so I'm just going to kind of mix it a little. I don't need the whole jar. But I do want a little bit of that olive oil, so I'm just going to mix it a little. And I'm going to put, oh, three or four sp small spoons. Maybe maybe two and a half tablespoons total. And I'm just going to spread that, not all the way to the edges, but we do want to get it in every piece. Okay. And then I have some of my home dried tomatoes and I think these were probably um, cherry tomato type. And I put just a little bit of warm water in there just so they start to rehydrate, but I don't want them really soft. I want them a little chewy. So now I'm going to fill the inside with that. And that was maybe a quarter cup, 
I'm not even sure it was that much. And just kind of spread them across. And I'm not using the liquid. I'm just, I'm just gonna use the actual tomatoes. Now let me wipe my hands a little bit. I have a little bit of a rustic Italian seasoning. And we don't want a lot because you've already got seasoning in the pesto. And the same with granulated garlic, just a dust. And then we're going to take Parmesan cheese. And this is the kind that's pre-grated. It's not in the little green thing, but um, just for a little bit of flavor. We don't want a ton. And I just took the other two loaves out of the oven and oh my gosh, they're, I really think they're going to be good. So now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to just kind of push that filling in, roll this over. And yes, it's messy, but you know, a lot of good things are. So same thing, you're going to want to get to the edge of the dough and pull it around. Push in the ends because we sure don't want it all squirting up the ends. That would really be a shame. So, getting it all over me and it makes it tough to get this sealed. Probably use a little bit less of that pesto, but you know what? It's going to taste good. Have this with some pasta or we're having leftover pizza for dinner because Shana bought a whole lot last night. So this will go with dinner. So now we're going to kind of put a little bit more rice flour down and just try and seal it up. So just pinch it together best you can. Roll it a little bit, just for shaping. And plus it'll kind of show you any gaps on the, the pinching part. All right. Some of this just doesn't want to stay together. I would say use a little bit less of the filling, but it's going to be amazing, so I don't care if it's a little bit messy. So into the couche. We're going to cover that up and get ready for the next one. And then for the last loaf, I'm just going to make it a regular loaf, so I'm not going to show you all that. But I will show you when I put these in and I'll show you what they all look like when they're done. And now here is the one that has the artichoke and sun-dried tomatoes. And I have decided because it just doesn't want to stay closed, that's going to be the top of the loaf. So I'm just going to slide that guy on, just like that. All right, this one I'm not even going to bother splitting because it already has splits. So I am just going to go, oh, just right down the middle. 
There we go. All right, I'm gonna put these in the oven, and again, 20 minutes covered. I'm gonna spray them with water, cover them with the roasting pan, which I've been preheating. And then I'm gonna take the roasting pan off and let it cook for another probably 20 minutes, and that's almost always perfectly done. So let me get these in the oven. When I'm all done, I'll show you how they all turned out. All right, they were all done. And this is the artichoke pesto with tomato and parmesan. This is cranberry orange with candy ginger. And this is cranberries, and I'm sorry, not cran, cherries and chocolate. So now we're gonna taste it. And I have tasters back here that don't wanna be on camera, so we'll keep them off camera while they try it. So here's... Be on camera for national security <laughs> There you go. This is the artichoke pesto with the dried tomatoes and parmesan. So we're gonna cut a piece for each. That one's just out of the oven. But the outside's nice and crispy and the crumb is nice and moist. That's why it's, it's smashing because it's still a little bit warm. Brian's giving me a thumbs up. He's not saying anything. Oh wow. Shayna says, oh wow. That is really good. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. That one's good. That's a success. So yum. This is cranberry orange with candy ginger. And the dogs are trying to get in on the, the whole process. It looks good. So, pretty crumb. Of course you're going to give them a little piece. You always do. Oh, my gosh. Mmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, that is really good. Oh, that is really, really good. You know what I'm having for dessert? Mm hmm Well, Brian's having dinner and dessert right here. Mm hmm Mmm. Good. Okay, this is cherry with chocolate. Oh, and it looks good too. Yum. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. The melted chocolate. Mm hmm. That's pretty. This is a Shayna piece because it's full of chocolate. Wow. That looks so good. That's quite a bit of chocolate. Mm hmm. Oh. <laughs> mm. No, you can't have any chocolate. So. Okay. They're all good. Yes. I think my favorite is the cranberry orange. Yep. This is good too. They're both, they're all good, but the cranberry orange I think is my absolute favorite. This one is wonderful and messy. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. anyway, success. 
Thanks for watching and Shayna's two thumbs up mm -hmm. as she's Not chewing one. away. Mm -hmm. So thanks for watching and this be good. Oh, I love these experiments. This would be good.